I've come out here to rural southeastern Alabama to tell you the story of Reverend William Skeeto. This is a fascinating ghost story, no matter how you tell it. And I'll tell you a little bit more about the history of whether or not it's true or false, but it's a really nice southern story. Now, Reverend Skeeto, as a young man, came to America uh, from Spain with his father, and he quickly became well-liked in the community. He took a liking to a girl, they got married, he had eight children with his wife, and he became a Methodist preacher. And uh, during the war, as the war came along, because he was born in 1818, he was getting to be a little bit of an older man. And in the Confederate military, he heard that his wife was sick, and she was pretty desperately sick too. So he took leave from the Confederate army to go back and visit her. Now, this was December 3rd, 1864. And towards these later years of the war, it became clear that the cause was sort of lost, and people were freaking out. And during the last two years, you didn't have any kind of judicial set taking place in this county. All justice done was just mob justice, and it was done at the hands of a group called the Buttermilk Rangers that was headed by a home guard member who was also a lawyer. It didn't really see much action, but he was kind of doing action to protect his community, or so he thought. So when Skeeto came back to visit his wife, he said, you're a traitor and a deserter. And Skeeto just said, no, I'm on leave. I have every right to be here. Plus, he'd already been in the military for three years. So they hanged him. Because this lawyer said he would hang any traitor who so dares leave the Confederacy. And no matter what arguments that Skeeto made, they went through with it anyway. And the hanging took place at a local bridge near here called Skeeto Bridge. And because Reverend Skeeto was such a tall man, a very large frame, they had to dig a hole underneath his feet so that he could hang. Now naturally, this prolonged his death for quite a while because his neck didn't snap. He suffocated over probably 20-30 minutes. And the hole, for 120-150 years afterwards, refused to fill. And it was only a couple decades ago when there was widespread flooding underneath this bridge that finally swept the hole away. But there's still many, many sightings of his ghost wandering under the bridge and near the site of his execution. Now, the history and the truth of this story is that Skeeto never really took part in the Confederate military, at least as far as we know. We have no records of him serving in the army, we have no records of him being a Confederate veteran, but it's kind of a widely accepted fact that he was. The words of this community kind of spread in the folklore between them. But what we think is true now, historians think, is that there was a large Union army or a Union sympathizing presence in the woods. There were partisans fighting against the Confederacy, and it's now widely believed that Reverend Skeeto was was delivering them supplies, and that he was executed. Now, was this execution just under the causes of war? Well, he was aiding the enemy, but I don't view the Union Army in the woods as the enemy, particularly when the Methodist preacher would be the one being executed for aiming him. But either way, I would consider, you know, no matter how you tell the story, William Skeeto ends up being a martyr. He was, he was a lovely man. He was well-liked in his community. He had a, a fantastic family with eight kids, and his life was cut short, unfortunately, and he could have lived many more years, but he didn't get this chance, and uh, for that reason, I've come out to his grave to tell you his story.